thank you for coming tonight for the uh, to this interview. Um, obviously, I've I've done a little bit of introduction on the Afghan cameleers. Please go ahead and say something on the history and what you have done so far. Well, um, I've researched the history of the Afghan cameleers in Australia f for 40 years. I started in 1980, not knowing where it would take me, and I, I'm a city girl. I travelled around Australia doing research and meeting the descendants, and over time the descendants and I got together to, to celebrate their heritage. Mm -hmm. um, so what we did was we, we organised events involving lots of people in, across Australia, uh, like we had festivals, we had book launches. So there's some uh, pictures here, posters uh, advertising some of the festivals that we did. Uh, but what we wanted to do was also set up some memorials to the Cameleers. So there's a photograph um, here um, in Mari, and there's a photograph of a memorial that we set up to the Cameleers. But I guess after all this time, I found it quite exciting that a coin was dedicated to the Afghan Cameleers. Mm. That's very interesting, isn't it? I mean, just yes. when you when you hear about the coin and uh, one side of the coin is actually a camel driver and the other side is uh, the queen, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's very significant, I think. Yes. And yeah, before we go actually to the coin, um, tell us a bit more, obviously, from the 40 years now, yeah? 40, 41 years you're doing the research. Well, From the beginning, how, do, how the Afghan came here? What was their origin? Right, well, they came here because they came here as workers. Uh, Australia was a very arid continent when the British arrived here. And after some time, they realised, uh, under orders from London, that if they were going to develop the colonies, especially the interior parts, horses and cattle could not cope with the climate, with mm -hmm. the droughts, the lack of feed. Um, it's interesting that the very first venture to get camels to come to Australia was done by the Victorian government because they wanted to conquer the whole continent and go from Melbourne in the south of the continent right up to the top to Gulf of Carpentaria. And they had the sense to understand that horses were not going to be the most successful beast mm -hmm. to carry all their supplies. So they in hired a man called George Landles to go back to India to pick out both camels and contract the Cameleers and they came to Victoria and it's very interesting that the very first Cameleers to sit on this continent came in 1860 mm -hmm. and this is the year of 2020 so 160 years ago the first Cameleers arrived here mm. my curiosity uh, as time went on, when the next commercial number of camels came was the origin of these cameleers. Like, where did they actually come from? What languages did they speak? What re geographical regions did they come from? What tribal groups did they come from? Because that has an impact on their names. Because as I meet descendants, I meet a whole lot of names. And so mm -hmm. I researched into the origins of these cameleers. Mm -hmm. Right? So the cameleers, I understand, uh, had to be within the British Empire because only colonists within the British Empire in the 1860s, 1880s, 1890s could move from one colony to another. But the interesting thing was that the camel zones of India, British India, were up in the northwest, mm. like Rajasthan, uh, the Sindh, the Punjab, and Baluchistan. But also, because the British Army had been trying to invade Afghanistan, in which they never were successful at, they also knew about cameleers and camel handlers in Afghanistan. And so they actually went into Afghanistan to the Kandahar markets where they got their camels from the Kandahar market. And consequently, quite a few of the cameleers that came here also came from Kandahar and Quetta, mm -hmm. but also came from regions of northwest India. Mm -hmm. Um, so basically, they came from the British India and Afghanistan. Yes. Obviously, Afghanistan never been under occupied. Of no, it the... wasn't occupied, but over hundreds of years, many Afghan families following the camel caravan routes would geographically move into northwest India. And I also found out that Afghanistan conquered northwest India. Mm. Uh, for 400 years earlier. And so their families were living side by side with Hindus at that time in northwest 
India. So there were a lot of Afghan families living inside of India. And that's why I think a lot of the Kamaliyas were from Afghanistan or from Afghan, Afghan families. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting because uh, when we're talking on 1860s and mm-hmm. before you know, Afghanistan, Afghan were coming here, obviously there was Amir of Afghanistan in Afghanistan. Yes, yes. And there is English side, which is the uh, uh, Indian, British India. Yes. Tell us a bit more on that sort of uh, topic. Well, I, um, the more I ca- read, the more I find out that the Emir of Afghanistan, you would think would have nothing to do or have no interest in Australia. But because the Kamaliyas came here from Afghan families and from Kandahar also, there were a couple of Afghans that actually came with camels themselves eventually and bought camels here once the camel in uh, transport business got going. And a man called Faiz Muhammad uh, was one of the very first camelers to come here, uh, sponsored by Thomas Elder. So mm-hmm. Thomas Elder bought the first 120 camels and 32 camelers. And Faiz Muhammad was amongst those. Now, he was very close to the Amir of Afghanistan because he was related to him by marriage. And he was quite a wealthy Afghan and quite an intelligent man. Mm -hmm. I think he's been underestimated in history. So when he went up to Beltana with the first shipload to arrive, eventually Thomas Elder loaned him money and he set up his own camel strings up around Mari and up around Unadatta. But then he went across to the gold fields in Western Australia. And in the goldfields of Western Australia, many of the Kamaliyas are known to have come from Afghanistan, as I have read. And when Faiz Muhammad would set up his business, he would employ Afghan Kamaliyas so they were never left stranded or unemployed. Mm -hmm. Then he would go to Kandahar. He would go and buy more camels himself and bring them to Western Australia for his businesses. He had six offices in Western Australia. But he would report to the Emir of of Afghanistan about how things were going in the Western Western. Australia, which I think is pretty amazing because in the end, the Emir was so pleased to get those reports that he actually rewarded Faiz Muhammad with a medal because of the care that Faiz Muhammad took of the Kamaliyas in Western Australia. Mm. I mean, the distances these Kamaliyas travelled were massive. Their camps were far apart, uh, which I'll talk about a bit more in a moment. But So to me, it was almost like Western Australia was like a provincial outpost from the perspective of the Emir of Afghanistan. Mm. How interesting is that? I mean, yeah. how... I mean, the distance between here and Afghanistan is obviously <laughs> thin, was... Was. Two and a half months by boat. By boat, yeah, exactly. Oh, I, well, that's a... to Karachi. Then you still have to go overland to get to Kandahar. To Kandahar, and there is, there was no Facebook. Obviously. No, no. <laughs> he, no they walked media. a lot. Most of the Kamaliyas in Australia walk, and, and I think they walk. And Faiz Muhammad was actually taking these messages back yes, to Afghanistan. Yes, he, he would arrive back in Karachi to 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 get his agent over there to purchase some camels for him. He would bring camels back to India, uh, to the west coast of Western Australia, but he would go visit the Amir. Do you they know which Amir really, was it? I, look, I did read it. I didn't write his name down. Okay. But I did do research because I was curious myself in case I could check with Fahim later on about the exact name of the Emir. But Fa- Faiz Muhammad was actually added to him by marriage. So there was a connection already set up. Okay, which year was that? So maybe our, our oh, viewers 18, want to search it. 1890s, we're talking. They would have to research Faiz Muhammad in the goldfields. Um, if you go deeper into <laughs> records, that there is a, the newspapers even re- were fascinated by the story. They reported on... Faiz Muhammad's fantastic business and his, mm. his ability to manage so many men, but they reported on his medal that he received. But I didn't show a picture of the medal in the newspapers at the time, which is a bit disappointing. Right. But the writing would have been of, of obviously in Afghan, Afghan writing on the on the coin. Mm. Well, that's that sounds interesting because normally with the Afghan history, you just hear the name of uh, Abdul Wahid, yes. you know, uh, Muhammad Alam. Muhammad uh, Alam. Muhammad Alam also had a connection to the Emir. But Faiz Muhammad is... He he was the one that achieved so much. I think someone should write a book on him. I thought of that many years ago. But as I learned more and more about that man, he had that connection to the Emir and would talk to the Emir about how the Kamaliyas are going in Australia, which I find fascinating. Who, Faiz Muhammad or Muhammad Faiz Alam? Muhammad would tell the Emir what's happening in Western Australia with the Kamaliyas. And to hear that conversation, then you get that perspective in history. It's not just only an Anglo-Saxon side of the story. You hear it would be interesting to hear that conversation. Mm-hmm. Muhammad Alam was also a Kamalia, and as time went by, 
he switched his occupations to being a herbalist. Mm. He's a famous herbalist, an amazing man too. But he also had a connection to the Emir of Afghanistan because his grandfather was a, a healer like Muhammad Alam was a healer in Australia, a retired Kamali who became a practicing herbalist. But his grandfather had saved the life of the Emir of Afghanistan like two generations earlier. And the Emir at that time had then rewarded his grandfather with giving him some gardens, obviously to grow herbs and some money. And then that tradition passed down to Muhammad Alam. So when Muhammad Alam would travel quite a bit himself, he didn't bring camels to Australia, but he travelled a lot to go back to get more herbs in Afghanistan. Oh, and he would visit the Emir as well. So his father was actually one of... He, his father was also herbalist. Yes, right? Yes. Living in Afghanistan, in Kandahar, yeah? yes. and and his father had healed the Emir who had been sick at the time. Oh, yeah, and that see. gave Muhammad Alam and his family a lot of status in Kandahar. And Muhammad Alam himself was very, very known in Australia. Oh, he, he, he was amazing. He was known oh, not only in Australia, he was known really well in Bombay, in Kandahar, uh, in Karachi. So he, he was a herbalist who had been mining in Broken Hill. And when he found that the miners were so sick, he started to treat them. So he put believed himself that he had that gift. Mm. So uh, what he did was uh, he treated many people. He treated Afghans themselves, but many Australians. He served many Australians. And hundreds of Australians came to him in Perth. In broken, not so much Broken Hill, but Adelaide and Perth. And when he said to Australia, look, I don't, I'm not going to come back anymore because he was getting older and he wanted to retire to Kandahar, they had a big orchestra down at Port Adelaide saluting him as he left mm. uh, because they thought so much of him. He was a very gifted man. I heard some um, uh, Hollywood actress or actress was coming from United States to be treated here by Muhammad Alam. Is that... I didn't find that case, but I know that there was an Italian opera singer in Italy who came to Adelaide and was having trouble with his voice. So he actually went to Muhammad Alam and Muhammad Alam cured his condition so he could sing again. And so he gave Muhammad Alam a walking cane with a gold head on it. Muhammad Alam had three gifts of canes given to him by people whose lives he impressed so much. How, how, how interesting is this? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> 